Hi all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ollie. I sew clothes, quilt, embroider, have a particular soft spot for cross stitch and an ever increasing collection of vintage sewing machines. You'll meet most of them in my videos. This channel shares my passion for all things sewing and hopes to dispel the myth that to enjoy your sewing hobby you have to buy all the latest toys and gadgets. You don't. Sewing's not about how much you spend, it's about the fun you have in making things. If this is something that interests you, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to get notified each time I upload a video. Today's video is about three important lessons that I learnt from uploading my last video. An apology and a correction. So let's get right into it. The last video was comparing a Singer hand crank to a Singer treadle. I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. I was talking about how the Singer 128, this one, differed from the Singer 27, Grandma, by having a bobbin release button, which they do. I also mentioned that this one is missing the button, which I thought it was, but it isn't. More on that in a minute. I learnt three valuable lessons from that last video. Lesson one, never assume. Because this little hole here is empty, I thought it was missing something. As I couldn't see a button for the bobbin release anywhere else, I assumed it was this hole. It isn't. Full credit and thanks to Fiddly Bits for this part, they pointed out that this hole is in fact for the oil wick that lubricates the bobbin area. An oil wick I didn't even know this machine had, or hasn't in this case. Which brings me to lesson two. Practice what you preach. Every time somebody asks me about sewing machines or puts a question on a Facebook group, my go-to response every time, download a manual. Not just for vintage machines like this 128, but for all sewing machines. The manual will tell you what you need to know to run and maintain your machine, from the type and size of bobbin to what the different parts do. I didn't download a manual for this one, I don't know why. Maybe because I have one for the 27, maybe because my mum had a 128 similar to this one, I really don't know. What I do know is I should have. When I did the anatomy of a Singer treadle video, links in the description below, I mentioned vintage sewing machines have parts that can still be found in modern machines today. This little wick is just one of those parts. Yep, that's right, modern machines have a wick similar to this one. I'll show you on Jerome. This is Jerome. He's my Janome. And to show you the little wick that he also has, what I'm going to need to do is take this cover off here. Okay, let's just take the bobbin housing out for a moment and look at the underneath. You see that little hole there? That's where the wick goes on this modern machine. So when you're clearing out the lint from your bobbin area, Make sure if you see anything in that little hole there that you leave it there because you'll need that. That's what sucks up the oil and releases it slowly into the machine to keep it lubricated nicely. My 128 is missing the small piece of wick that slowly releases the oil so I'll need to replace that. I'm hoping that it should be a lot easier than replacing a bobbin release button which would probably have involved replacing the entire bobbin race which thankfully I don't have to do. Full credit and thanks to Melatone who pointed out that the release button is actually here. Let me show you. Just to the right of the bobbin on this little arm is a little button. And guess what? It works! I'm absolutely tickled pink. I've been pushing down on the tip of the bullet casing like I do with grandma. So thanks very much Melatone. You have no idea how happy I am to find out I have one of those. <laughs> which brings me to lesson number three, research, which kind of ties into lesson number one. Had I done the research on this machine, instead of assuming I knew it through years of watching my work as a kid, I would have produced a better, more accurate video, which gives a bonus lesson. Lesson number four, be consistent. I spent ages looking into why a small rod of metal was called a pitman arm in the anatomy of a treadle video, yet didn't spend the time making sure I knew my oil wick from my bobbin release button. I forgot that it isn't about the consistency of when videos are uploaded or the frequency and the speed, it's about the consistency of quality within those videos and the accuracy of the info they contain. I feel like I let you all down and for that I'm truly sorry. 
I will do my utmost to make sure I do better next time. I'm still only human though, so please, next time I forget one of these four lessons, let me know in the comments. Better still, let me know in the comments when I'm getting it right. Thanks again to Fiddly Bits and Melatone. I really appreciate you reaching out to me and sharing knowledge that I have found both useful and valuable. That's all for today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell to get notified when I upload a new video. Whatever you're sewing, wherever you're sewing it, enjoy. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.